Kia ora and welcome to our third speaker in this first session. Our next presenter is Dr Paul Schofield, who is presenting a paper on the significance of the Jurassic Fossil Collections Exchange by Ferdinand Hochstetter with Julius Haast, which is co-authored by Vanessa de Pietri. Paul is my colleague at Canterbury Museum, having been Senior Curator Natural History for many years. Paul researches the paleoecology of Aotearoa New Zealand and is particularly involved with a long-running project in St. Bathans in Otago. Vanessa de Pietri is a research fellow in the School of Earth and Environment at the University of Canterbury and is pr principal investigator on a Royal Society of New Zealand Te Aparangi Marsden funded project examining the paleofauna from North Canterbury that existed very shortly after the extinction event that wiped out dinosaurs. Paul, I'm looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much, Julia. Um, good morning, Morena, guten Abend. Um, in this talk, uh, we're going to talk about the um, exchanges of fossils, primarily pre-Cenozoic fossils, made between uh, Julius Haast and um, Ferdinand Hosschetter. Um, I apologise for my pronunciation of German words and names in this presentation. It is my wife and co-author Vanessa, who is the German speaker. I will begin by reintroducing our protagonists. Um, firstly, Prussian-born Johann Franz Haast. Haast arrived in Auckland, New Zealand on the 21st of December, 1858. While details of Haast's early life are sketchy, he may have had a background in geology. Enrolment records cast doubt on the claim made by his son and biographer Heinrich that he studied at the University of Bonn, but he may have attended some courses. He apparently did have some knowledge of mineralogy, perhaps learnt while he was a merchant in Belgium. Haast had good English at the time of his immigration and was apparently employed to assess the new colony as a destination for German-speaking immigrants. On the other hand, we have the scholar Ferdinand Hofstetter. A Württemberger, Christian Gottlob Ferdinand Hostetter had trained in mineralogy and geology at Tübingen University under Friedrich Quanstead, and we'll have more about him in a minute. He had graduate, graduated as a Doctor of Philosophy in 1852 and was recruited to the Austrian Geological Survey in Vienna in 1853. He became Chief Geologist for Bohemia and in 1856, he was admitted as a lecturer at the University of Vienna. In 1857, Hostetter was appointed geologist to the scientific expedition of the Austra Austrian naval frigate Navara. The expedition planned to cir circumnavigate the globe, displaying the Austrian flag, and it carried eight scientists and assistants to undertake research. This is the astonishing moment for Haast and his entire career. For by coincidence, Haast arrived in Auckland, New Zealand, on the day before Hothschetter and Navara arrived on the 22nd of December, 1858. And this a coincidence was going to be incredibly formative, not only in Haas's career, but in fact in the very existence of Canterbury Museum. <clears throat> As part of the scientific program during the Navarra expedition and its stay in the Auckland province, Hostetter undertook a survey of the Auckland volcanic field. This map here is from the um, survey of the Auckland volcanic field that um, Hostetter undertook, perhaps with Haast accompanying him. And we'll see in the, that this is the, the frontispiece of the Navarra expedition um, accounts. And um, encircled in red um, is the um, Auckland stay. Um, that you'll see there, and each of the other ports that the Navarra visited um, is um, written around that illustration. The New Zealand government was so enamoured by Hostetter's geological work, and of course the financial 
um, and development opportunities that geological surveys may provide, that they invited Hostetter to leave the Navarra and undertake geological surveys of the Auckland and later Nelson provinces. Haast, um, who we know had very good English, um, was invited by Hostetter to accompany um, him on the survey, of, of, uh, firstly of the survey of Auckland and, and later of the surveys of Nelson. And although um, we understand that Haast had some background in geology, it seems likely that it was in fact his English skills that were the most important thing that Hostetter um, required him for on the surveys. And of course, his um, ability to actually um, cover large areas of terrain um, that is, are required during ge geological surveys. <coughs> The geological map you can see here um, was reprinted on several different occasions um, by James Hector, um, who was the um, colonial geologist and the founder of the Colonial Museum. Um, but even he um, freely admitted that a great deal of the information, especially on the Auckland and Nelson provinces, which is encircled here in red, um, was still based on the earlier work of Hofstede and Haast. <clears throat> so late in 1859, um, Haast found himself in Nelson province. Um, and this is the town of Nelson, um, painted in 1858, um, illustrating the type of um, environment that Haast found himself in in Nelson province in late in 1859. Um, Nelson Province was considerably larger than it is today. It in fact encompassed the whole of the northern South Island. And although Hoschetta was originally um, intending to undertake a complete geological survey, um, this could not be uh, completed in the time that he had available. Um, so Hoschetta departed, for Nels uh, departed Nelson for Australia and then for Europe. In, on October the 2nd, 1859. Over the um, previous 10 months, it's clear that Haast received a crash course in uh, geological surveying um, for, from Hofstede, and he clearly must have learned a great deal of Hofstede's um, knowledge. And for by November 1859, Haast so impressed the provincial government of Nelson that he was imported, uh, appointed provincial geologist in order to complete the survey that Hofstede and he had um, begun. Now, one of the terms of Hofstede's appointment was that he would make collections for both the Navarra expedition and for the New Zealand government. And to this end, several collections were made and there are records of a donation to the fledgling Nelson Museum of 1,500 mineral specimens. Sadly, many, if not most, of these were lost in a fire that burnt down the Nelson Museum in 1906. What is now becoming apparent is that a second collection was kept by Haast, containing material for most of the sites that he and Hostetta visited during 1859. And one of the findings of our work is that this collection eventually made its way to Canterbury Museum. But the rocks shown here are from the Thames region, um, famous for its gold deposits, and from the Dun Mountain, which is, overlooks um, Nelson City today, um, and illustrate the napped hand specimens that Hotshedder had been taught to make whilst he was a student. Um, and we believe the handwriting on these specimens is Hofstetter's. The rocks in the bottom right appear to have been relabeled by Haast after it was incorporated into the Canterbury Museum collection. Through the publications of Sasha Nolden and Simon Nathan, we know that after Hofstetter's departure, he encouraged Haast to collect and observe everything di diligently. And over the following years, he sent numerous requests to Haast 
for natural history specimens. Until Haas became settled in Canterbury, these requests were one-sided, with Hostetter asking for more and more material from the growing and um, increasingly explored colony. Um, but shortly after Haas arrived in Christchurch, Haas formed the idea of this, uh, developing a museum. And following several um, letters, Hothschetter promised he would send a collection of fossils from the Alps of the, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. <clears throat> this promise took Hothschetter some time to fulfill, but when Hothschetter did send material, it was extremely significant, as we'll, we will now um, discuss. <clears throat> The first um, collection that we're aware came from um, Austria to Canterbury Museum was actually the one that Haast and Hofstetter had collected from uh, during the Navarra um, Expedition Geological Surveys. Um, and the most significant part of this were the fossil collections that had been returned to Vienna and examined and described by Karl Alfred von Zittel. Uh, Zittel, who spent the majority of his career in Munich, was tasked with the identification and descriptions of, the fossil, of this fossil material. Whilst the type material remained in Vienna, correspondent in, uh, correspondence indicates that Hostetter sent Haast a, a large collection of identified fossil material from this expedition. At this stage, the majority of this material has not been um, formally identified in the collections of Canterbury Museum, but the identification of this material will be the subject of future research. <clears throat> Frederick August Quinstead was the Professor of Mineralogy and Geology at the University of Tübingen. Um, Quinstead defined um, the lithostratigraphical units um, in the German uh, Jurassic and Triassic, and subdivided each of these units into departments which were designated with Greek letters. This training and this um, geological background um, was absorbed by Hostetter as Hostetter, um, as Quinstead was Hostetter's professor at Tübingen, and he gave Hostetter his grounding in Mesozoic paleogeography that was to become a central theme of Hostetter's career. We know one of Hostetter's first roles after graduation was in the Bohemian region of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a classic um, mid-Jurassic or Brauna Jura locality was near the town of um, Svintia in the province of Banat, which is now in Romania. And we know from correspondence that, Host that one of Hostetter's first exchanges with Haast was in fact material um, from Svintia. And this um, label, um, which is clearly identified as coming from the um, Imperial um, Geological Survey, um, appears to have been written in um, Hostetter's handwriting um, and has several um, Ammonites in this particular uh, collection lot. Um, but we know from the correspondence that there were at least um, 40 thin cut microscopic slides and a, a small number of, of alpine ammonites in this collection. The Viennese Edmund Moisovics was um, one of the foremost cephalopologists of the late 19th century, and a specialist in the middle and upper Triassic Hallstattakalke of the northern limestone Alps. Hallstatt, um, which is a region um, in upper Austria, um, was in exceptionally important um, in defining the Jurassic of and Triassic uh, lithostratigraphy of the Alps and was heavily studied right through the 19th century. Um, <clears throat> in 1873, Hochstetter was working on an ar archaeological dig in this region 
And there are two quotes, these two quotes here are from Sasha Nolder's transcriptions of the Haas Hosteda letters. Um, it's clear that um, this region uh, had had a large number of collections and there was a significant amount of material available for exchange. Um, to put the, uh, the first quote um, into context, um, 400 uh, gilden um, was in fact more than a year's wages for a, um, a labourer. Um, so it shows that some of the um, purchases and exchanges that um, Hotschedos were making were for significantly um, valuable um, material. Um, and the, the, it also sh that these letters also show that there were several um, exchanges from these sites. And we can tell from the collections in Canterbury Museum, from the original labels that we actually have, that in fact um, there are several collections actually um, in uh, Canterbury Museum. Um, for example, the, um, the pencil written label in the top left here um, is clearly, uh, I believe, in um, Hotshedder's handwriting, um, but has been written um, and, and pencil suggesting that it may actually be a field label, um, perhaps made in 1873. The lower um, label in this uh, slide um, is written uh, with Hosjeda's um, 1873 formally written label, but possibly a label made um, in, the, um, in the lab, um, identifying um, the exact locality of uh, that collection. Um, however, the label in the top right-hand corner, um, I believe, is made by um, um, That This is very distinctive handwriting, um, and he also uses um, terms for particular collection localities, which only Moiseviks, um was actually um, ever used in his publications. Possibly the most important um, of the early Triassic sites, um, the Kashina uh, Shikdin, um, the St. Cassin Strata of northwestern um, Italy, um, <clears throat> was exceptionally important in defining the Triassic. And between the 1865 and 1870, Gustav Karl Laube uh, revised the invertebrate fauna of the Cassian beds um, in the collections of um, the Hof Mineral Cabinet in, in Vienne, um, which is now the nat and, and that collection is now in the Natural History Museum, and also in the Imperial Poly, um, Polytechnic Institute and the Geological Survey um, in, of Austria. And his results were published um, in a series of very um, influential papers. Um, <clears throat> And more than a thousand species of Triassic fauna have been described from various localities in this area. Um, and no, no other um, early Mesozoic strata have such an early uh, outstanding um, fossil record. And Canterbury Museum has over a hundred specimens from this locality that appear to have been labelled in the hand of Laube, and some are labelled by Johann Nintz, um, which records show, um, you can see this in the um, label on the right hand side here, uh, Nintz was a mountain guide who collected for Laube um, in the um, St Cassian's area. Um, many of the uh, fossil sites in this area are very inaccessible um, on mountain peaks and even on cliff sites. Um, so the, the fact that we've got a label here actually from Nins himself um, is quite remarkable um, and shows a clear um, chain of custody, as it were, between the, um, the original collectors, the uh, descriptor, the des describer Laube, and um, the Canterbury Museum collections. The next significant collection that we have is a large collection of um, 162 specimens of Silurian fossil um, from Bohemia, mostly from the area around Prague, that was sent by Hotschetter to Haast in 1880. 
These specimens were significant as they were probably collected by the French geologists uh, Joachim Barande. Um, and Barande um, defined the uh, Silurian time period and defined, divided the Silurian rocks of Bohemia, uh, most of which is now the Czech Republic, into eight stages. Um, Barande used a very interesting um, scale for defining the Silurian, um, which is clearly identifiable in some of the labels that we still have on, on specimens in Canterbury Museum. Um, and this scale um, is pretty much only used by Burundi um, identifying these uh, specimens as un unquestionably coming from him. Um, so we have 132 specimens in the Canterbury Museum collection from this um, Burundi, um, some labelled with the Geological Institute of the Imperial Insti uh, University, Prague, um, and this gives us a very um, defined period that these labels must have been made, is that uh, that university, which is now Charles University, was only had this um, title for a very short period of time. Um, the next uh, collection that um, I'd like to talk about is one that the hamburger um, Karl Christian Gottschi um, who completed his PhD thesis under Zittel, um, made from Jurassic fossils from the Argentine um, Andes. And these were collected by the Dresden-born um, Alfred Wilhelm uh, Stelchner. And we have a small collection of material um, from, this, from uh, several Andean sites. Um, the most significant are uh, probably the, the ones from the um, Espinocito Pass, uh, which is a, a high alpine pass um, at 449 metres above sea level, um, which separates Argentina from Chile. Um, for New Zealanders, to put that in context, um, that's more than 1,000 metres higher than the very top of Aorangi Mount Cook. Um, and this site um, was visited by um, Stelchner and um, Argentinian um, guides um, in um, the 1850s. And this material had a very important role to play in our understanding of um, paleobiogeography, um, showing that many of the ammonite species from the Jurassic of um, and Cretaceous of the Andes were the same or very similar to those found in Europe. Um, so to have a few specimens from this site is really quite remarkable. <coughs> now, Haas' early scientific outputs and correspondence suggest he was comparatively uninterested in the neogene and quaternary um, paleontology of New Zealand. Um, and one could fairly cynically say that he, um, in fact, absorbed so much of, Ho of Hotshedder's enthusiasm um, and implied importance for the uh, Mesozoic um, paleogeography that he, in fact, pretty much ignored um, the more recent um, geological history of New Zealand. Um, and more cynically, one could say that he only really became um, interested in MOA once he discovered um, the importance that um, Richard Owen and the uh, evolutionists um, placed on extinction events such as the extinction of MOA um, and the importance that um, European scientists placed on MOA themselves. Um, once he found that MOA bones were currency, he appears to have expended a great deal more of his energy on collecting and exchanging moa bones. Um, but unfortunately, Haas' publications on moa were not terribly insightful and have not really survived the test of time. Um, so, in summary, I'd... Uh, We'd like to speculate that um, Haas' geological education began with an emphasis on the pre-Cenozoic due to Hofstede's education and interests 
And it, furthermore, um, due to the exchanges that he um, received um, from Hothschetter and the information that he received um, both in the exchange publications and especially um, in the letters um, of Hothschetter's um, burgeoning career. Um, we'd like to point out um, the Hofstetter exchanges with Haas contain very significant um, pre-Cenozoic European Alpine collections. Um, and um, we'd like to um, show that the significance of this material um, really needs further assessment to find out if any of the uh, material um, used in species descriptions was included um, in the exchanges that um, Hofstede made to Canterbury Museum. Um, certainly the initial examinations of some of the um, publication um, lithographs that we've got um, suggest that in, in fact some of the illustrated specimens may actually be um, those that were actually exchanged with Canterbury Museum and we're looking forward to um, making more detailed comparisons to see if, if that's actually the case. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Paul. That was um, that was fascinating. Even um, to a non-geologist like myself, it was um, really, really interesting. Um, so it was wonderful to get the background on Haas' development as a geologist. I found that um, really interesting. And also more details about the exchange process and the importance of exchanges for the expansion of geological knowledge globally. And the value of the specimens was quite an eye-opener to me as well. Uh, and another thing from a museological point of view, the importance of always keeping the original labels with any object, but obviously particularly geological specimens. It's wonderful that there is going to be future, future research on this. Um, and thank you very much, Paul and Vanessa, for the work you've done so far.